thousand years before Christ is born. Uh, and Haggai in, in chapter two uh, says that on the twenty-first day of the seventh month, the word of the Lord came through the prophet Haggai. Speak to the remnant of the people. Ask them, who of you is left who saw this house in its former glory? How does it look to you now? Does it not seem to you like nothing? But now be strong, Zerubbabel, declares the Lord. Be strong, Joshua, son of Josedak, the high priest. Be strong, all you people of the land, declares the Lord. And work, for I am with you, declares the Lord Almighty. This is what I covenanted with you when you came out of Egypt, and my spirit remains among you. Do not fear. This is what the Lord Almighty says. In a little while, I will once more shake the heavens and the earth, the sea and the dry land. I will shake all nations, and what is desired by all nations will come. And I will fill this house with glory, says the Lord Almighty. And. Uh, this verse, especially verse 7, really uh, spoke to me uh, a couple of weeks ago when this whole thing started and we were praying for Italy, we were praying for uh, England, uh, and uh, this verse came to my mind that the desired of all nations will come. So I went and read uh, this, uh, this chapter in the book of Haggai, uh, and I could really relate to what uh, the people of Israel uh, were, going on, uh, were going through at that time, because uh, the people of Israel were just coming out of uh, captivity, slavery, so things are not going well for them. Uh, and uh, basically, God asked this question. It says, look at uh, the house of God, look at the temple, and who remembers it when it was in its former glory? And what does it look like now? And obviously, it's, uh, it's uh, been destroyed, it's in ruins, uh, and it's not a pretty sight. Uh, and it's very discouraging uh, for the people of Israel to look at the house of God, at their city uh, uh, being completely destroyed. Uh, but then God says, be strong, be strong, be strong. And he says it three times. And it, we know that when in the Bible uh, something is repeated three times, it's because it's important and it's true. Uh, and then God gives this incredible promise that he will shake all nations, which sounds a little bit scary, to be honest. Uh, but then it says, and what is desired by all nations will come and I will fill this house, my temple. I will fill you, my people, with my glory. Uh, and it's wonderful to see this promise in the context of this pretty bleak uh, picture of the temple of God and the city uh, being uh, still destroyed and in, and in ruins. Uh, and it's wonderful. We know that this, this promise relates to Jesus. Uh, and it's uh, wonderful to, to hear Jesus referred to as the desire of all nations. Uh, mm. And it's God saying that, he has put a desire in all men and women across humanity, across history, uh, from all different countries and nationalities and religions, uh, a desire that only God can fulfill, only Jesus can fulfill. But even on a personal level, God has put a desire in me and has put a desire in you, in our neighbors and our families that only he can fulfill. Uh, and... I don't know if you would agree that a uh, couple of weeks ago, uh, definitely for me, a couple of weeks ago, my desires were completely different from today. Uh, in fact, this was the extent of my desire uh, a couple of weeks ago. Uh, just a nice uh, morning coffee, uh, chilled, easy day at work, uh, a drink in the evening. Uh, just to relax and distress. Uh, hopefully, a nice uh, dinner with Angela uh, to, to end the day. Um, but because of what we've been going through, and like we heard on Sunday, um, we have no more stabilizers. Uh, God has taken, has been shaking the nation. It's definitely been shaking uh, us. Uh, and everything that felt safe and secure and important even is, is kind of gone. 
Um, and I find that what I wanted and desired a couple of weeks ago, uh, it's not what I want uh, today. Um, and I feel like that um, that word, that that phrase, you know, take the world but give me Jesus. Uh, all I can really want oh, yes. is, is to see Jesus uh, in, in my home, uh, in my uh, in my kids, in in my marriage. Uh, all I want is to see uh, Jesus. Um, like we were praying last night, we want to see the miracles of Jesus. Uh, we want to see uh, God's uh, provision uh, for us, for our families, for our communities. We want to see God move uh, in our nation. We want to see uh, God uh, use uh, the uh, the NHS and the doctors and the scientists. And 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 suddenly everything has uh, has more meaning and more value when we pray for our leaders. When uh, and when we read uh, uh, a scripture like today and, and God saying, do not fear, uh, I am with you. And we really want to see that. We really want to experience it. It's like our desire to see God has, has, uh, has um, become really focused, like a laser beam. Uh, and I feel like God is asking the same question uh, uh, for us today. You know, look, look at my church, look at the house of God in Orpington. What do you see? Uh, and maybe in the midst of confusion and anxiety and worry, uh, there's this part of me, part of us that says, well, I don't see much uh, because we're stuck at home, because we don't know when this is going to end, mm. because uh, this is really a scary time. It's worrying uh, and people are getting sick. Uh, but the promise of God still stands. Um, mm. And... Um, Angela and I were uh, watching Thor uh, the other day. Um, in fact, we've been watching a lot of Marvel uh, films lately. Well, we're watching it with, with, with the girls. Uh, I know uh, this might be a bit controversial, but uh, we love it. We've been watching all the Avengers and we're watching Thor. And there's this incredible scene at the end of Thor uh, Ragnarok, uh, where uh, Thor is uh, lost his hammer, he's lost his power, he's getting beat by this evil creature uh, called Hela, uh, and he's basically dying, and he has a vision of his father, Odin, uh, and he's saying, Father, I give up, uh, I can't do this, I'm, I'm getting beat. Uh, and Odin, his father says, look, are you the god of hammers, or are you the god of thunder? Uh, the hammer is just a tool, it's just a symbol. Uh, the power is in you. You are my son. You are the son of Odin. You are the god of thunder. And he kind of reminds him of who he is and his identity. But then Thor says, but Asgard, which is his city and his kingdom, Asgard has been destroyed. It's too late. And Odin says, Asgard is not a place. It's a people. And in fact, he says, it's where we stand as a people uh, that uh, matters. And Angela and I looked at each other and said, well, that's the church. Uh, the church is not a place. Uh, it's, it's a people. Uh, and really felt encouraged uh, by God uh, saying, uh, do not fear. Uh, my spirit is among you. Do not fear. I'm, I, I am shaking the nations. I am doing something. Uh, but uh, the church, it's not a building. It's not a people. Uh, it's not a, a, a list of activities. My spirit is in you. Uh, and uh, I am bringing, I am doing something. And in the midst of, of confusion, yes, and yes, you might yes. feel... Uh, powerless, uh, but the promise of God stands. He is doing something. He is shaking us so that our desires are completely focused uh, on Jesus. And the promise is that he is among us and that he will fill this house, which is us, uh, with his glory. Um, and the amazing thing is that Haggai, who writes uh, this book, who writes these verses, uh, his name means uh, festival, holiday. Um, and uh, it's this beautiful picture that in the midst of ruins and uh, really hard work, because they have to work hard to rebuild, uh, God says, when, when, you, when your desires are focused on Jesus, uh, uh, it's, it's, it's a holiday. Uh, in, the, in the midst of stress and anxiety, there's rest. 
uh, when when we put our desires, when we uh, direct our desires to Jesus, God, the promise is that God gives us stress, uh, rest. Um, and uh, before Jesus comes, Haggai writes this 500 years before Jesus is born. And in fact, there's uh, 400 years of silence in the Bible between the Old Testament and the New Testament. There's a long period of wait. Uh, and uh, in in our current situation, uh, waiting is is stressful. Not knowing when this will end, not knowing when we will come out of our homes, when we will be together as a church again, when we can see families again, is stressful. Uh, and for those that don't know the Lord, it it can be soul destroying. But for us, having this this living hope, this promise uh, of uh, that we have in Jesus, uh, waiting, it's actually we can wait in rest. And actually the Bible promises that in waiting, we can soar like eagles and we can find strength uh, in the Lord. So I just wanted to remind us uh, that God is for us, that God is with us, is amongst us, his spirit is in us and not to fear, uh, but that his promise is to fill us with his, with his glory. Amen. 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 Awesome. <clears throat> should we just pray then? Should we respond to that, that message? Um, and, uh, yeah, yes. we'll, uh, we'll just pray, shall we?